Just to eliminate that. It's like the jam break? Ah, uh, still throw that under break. Okay. The window? What, what'd the you say? Oh, no. Steering? Yes. The steering wheel is an accelerator from a physics point of view. Because remember, velocity is how fast an object's going and in what direction. So anything that changes how fast you're going, the brake pedal and the gas pedal, and any, or anything that changes direction, the steering wheel, are all, will all cause acceleration. If we look at this equation right here, the units of acceleration will be the units of velocity over the units of time. The brackets here just mean we're talking about units. My units of velocity are meters per second, and time is the second, that's the SI unit. So my units of acceleration are meters per second per second, which is awfully awkward. We can clean that up some. I'm going to flash back to multiplying fractions, or dividing by fractions, bring back some good memories. I assume everyone in here has done some dividing by fractions. So if I did one half divided by three fourths, that's one half times four thirds. You just flip the second one and multiply. So that becomes four sixths. Down here, I have meters per second divided by seconds. I can turn anything into a fraction just by putting it over one. So that's a meter per second times one over seconds, which is a meter per second squared. So the international standard unit of acceleration is a meter per second squared. So I have a marker right here. I'm going to assume up is positive. So it goes up and then down. So the time is equal to zero. So I'm going to have a time column in seconds, and I'm going to have a velocity column in meters per second. So the time is zero. My velocity was zero. Then at one second, we'll just say two meters per second. Two seconds, it was going four meters per second. Three seconds, it was going two meters per second. Four seconds, it was going zero. That's at the peak, and then it's on the way down. Five seconds, we'll say negative two. Six seconds, negative four. And we'll just stop it there. So an object that goes up and then comes back down, and we stop it before it stops. Any questions about what these numbers mean at the moment? Yeah, what do they mean? So this is the time. So this, this problem takes place over six seconds. So basically I have an object that goes up in the air and then starts coming back down. This is how fast it's going at that time. So at time is zero, it's at rest. At one second, it's going two meters per second. At two seconds, it's going four meters per second, even faster. At three seconds, it's slowed down to two meters per second. It stops, and now it's on the way back down. But thank you for not snagging the cord. That's how we did that yesterday. All right. So, from when, when to when is the object speeding up? Two. Well, it starts speeding up at one. Okay, so it's speeding up at one. Yeah, from one to two. Yeah, like, yeah. From zero to two. Well, okay. I was going for more generally. Yeah, it is at one, but it is speeding up from here during this region right here. Speed up. Okay. Sure. Uh, anywhere else it's speeding up? Technically. 
Keep going. Okay. Um, from four six seconds. Yeah. So it's speeding up here also. Speeding up doesn't care about direction. It just cares about it going faster. From two to four, it's slowing down. I commented over here that my acceleration is velocity, change in velocity over change in time. I have only two vectors in this first equation here, acceleration and change in velocity. So acceleration and change in velocity have to be in the same direction. They'd have the same sign. So from one to four, uh, so in the first two seconds, what is my change in velocity? It is indeed. And then from four to zero, uh, sorry, two to four seconds, what is my change in velocity? Negative four meters per second. And then from zero to negative four. Negative four meters per second. The biggest issue that beginning students have with acceleration is that somewhere they get stuck in their head that negative acceleration means slowing down, and that is not the case. Because we're talking about vectors here. Here is positive acceleration, which is speeding up in this case. We can also do positive acceleration where it's slowing down. But here we have negative acceleration, which is slowing down, and here we have negative acceleration, which is speeding up. So what are the general rules? Well, you could just figure out the velocities and is the velocity going to the right on the number line or the left on the number line. But it comes down to, there are a couple ways of looking at the sign of acceleration. If an object is speeding up, velocity and acceleration have the same sign. If slowing down, velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. So here, my velocity is positive, my acceleration is negative, I'm slowing down. In the first region, velocity is positive, acceleration, or change in velocity, or acceleration is also positive, I'm speeding up. Down in this last bit, my change in velocity, and therefore acceleration, is negative. My velocity is also negative. I'm speeding up. So that's one way of looking at the sign of acceleration. It does require you're thinking, oh, what's, is it speeding up, slowing down? That's usually not the hard part. The next part is, is the acceleration, uh, sorry, what's the sign of the velocity, and therefore figure out what the sign of the acceleration is. Questions before I talk about another way of looking at the exact same thing. Acceleration and force also are in the same direction. So if you think about it, I'm going in the negative direction and then I'm pushed in the negative direction. Will I speed up or slow down? Acceleration and force and velocity in the same direction, I, I'm going to speed up. Force and acceleration have the same direction, so therefore acceleration and velocity are in the same direction, speeding up. So from this point of view, acceleration is positive if the force, if the total force is positive. Now I'm going in the negative direction, but somebody pushes me that way. Am I going to speed up or slow down? Initially, yeah. Because the force is positive, my velocity is negative. My force is positive, 
My acceleration is positive, my velocity is negative, they're opposite signs, I'm slowing down. Depends on how hard he pushes, they might slow me down to a stop and then suddenly start speeding me up because now I'm moving in that direction. Before we do the plus minus zero, let's get a little freshening up here. Stretch your legs, breathe free air, whatever, Take, get a drink of water. I think there's still some chocolate milk over there if you like chocolate milk. If you like black beans, I got like already snagged those, but I'd be glad to share the black beans if anybody would like them. I know, the red mark is kind of hard to see over there. Oh. Why don't I pause this? and hopefully remember to turn it back on. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that if I just say what is the acceleration, I'm talking about instantaneous. If I want the average acceleration, I need to specify average. A lot of the problems that we're going to be doing, acceleration is constant, so the instantaneous and the average are the same. All right. We are all refreshed, ready to go. My position. Oh, I lost my definition there. To the right is positive. All right, so my position. Positive. Displacement. Positive. Velocity. Sorry, zero meters per second. Zero meters per second. I'm not moving. Uh, and my acceleration? Zero. Is my velocity changing? Mm -hmm. All right, so if velocity doesn't change, acceleration is zero. We talked about that somewhat before in the last chapter when we talked about equilibrium. Recall that equilibrium means that the total force is zero, or net force, or however you want to write it, is zero. But since force and acceleration are linked so strongly, that means also means the acceleration is zero. And because acceleration and change in velocity are linked so strongly, that also means the change in velocity is zero. So if one of these is true, the other two are true, all three of them mean these are all, all very connected, um, I was about to say definitions of the equilibrium. Yeah, I guess you probably could say equilibrium means these are true, these mean equilibrium is true. All right, my velocity? Negative. My position? Negative. Displacement? Negative. Acceleration? about to run out of the room, so let's try that one again. I'll start out with velocity and then I'll do acceleration, just to sort of give you some prep there. My velocity? Negative. My acceleration? Probably zero. Why zero? Uh, it doesn't seem to me like you are changing your speed. Or? Direction. Thank you. Correct. The acceleration is supposed to be zero. Now, some of you might have been just really looking at the subleaves of it and going, well, he's going at two meters per second, then he went down to 1.9 meters per second. Uh, that was not the intent. All right, so here we go again. I'm going to go in that direction. So once I start going in that direction, what will my velocity be? Negative. All right. So we already got velocity out of the way. My acceleration? Zero. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try that one again. Can answer before I get to the rookie pool. All right, so my velocity is zero right now, but if it's about to change, I'm going, it's going to be negative in just a moment. So my velocity? Negative. negative. My acceleration? Negative. Negative. Yeah, acceleration was negative. I was speeding up, therefore they're the same sign. All right. Now, the velocity, negative. acceleration, positive, correct. 
Did you slow down? I slowed down. That was supposed to be slowing down. So if you slow down, it's, it's positive. I slowed down, therefore they're opposite signs. The only way that I can, if I'm going that way, the only way I can slow down is that there's some force pushing in that direction. In that case, it's friction with my feet. But because the net force is that way, the acceleration is positive. All right, let's flip it around. <coughs> my velocity will be positive. I'm about to ask what acceleration is, all right. Acceleration? Positive. And then what about there at the end? Negative. Oh, not that far at the end. Yeah, my acceleration was positive, my acceleration became negative, and then I stopped completely. I guess. That's why I thought it was zero. Yeah, you read my mind. Well, that seems simple enough. At least there were enough voices, or some people who could do two voices at once. So if you're speeding up, then your acceleration and your velocity are both gonna be the same, like? Correct. Okay. If you're slowing down, then it's gonna be opposite. Yes. Okay. All right. So now, I'm gonna go in that direction, and I'm gonna turn around. So my velocity is negative, Turn around, my velocity is positive. At the moment that I turn around, what is my velocity? Zero. What is my acceleration? Zero. No. Acceleration. Would it be positive? Why? <laughs> um. There are a couple reasons you could give. Could you start it moving again? Uh, that doesn't narrow it down enough. Okay. Why would it be positive? Because you stopped and started going back? Um, because your acceleration and your velocity is the same now? Um, All right, but my velocity and acceleration, remember I slowed down to, in order to stop and then I sped up. The direction? So, Think about it. if I'm changing directions, if I'm going that way and then move back in this direction, which way is the force going to have to be applied to me? In a positive way? Yeah. The force has to be in that way. There's no way that I'll slow down if I'm going in that direction and I get pushed in that direction. Something slows me down, stops me, and then pushes me back. So at that point of turnaround, at this point, my velocity is zero, but my acceleration was positive. The most common mistake was exactly what I heard over here. So thank you for playing with that. People assume that being stopped means your acceleration is zero. If that's the case, acceleration is the change in velocity over change in time. If acceleration is zero, it's equilibrium. That means your velocity doesn't change. How many of you have been at a stoplight and have never left? <laughs> It is possible to have zero velocity and have acceleration. That's how you get moving. Hopefully you'll do the lab with the, the motion sensor and you can play around with that and you can see points where acceleration is not zero but your velocity is zero. Uh, the linear motion lab, have you done that one yet or? We just got done with the force scale. Okay. Are we going to be done with two stuff about tomorrow? I mean, third campus. I think you're ready for the ball problem. What the problem? The ball problem. Can you repeat, I'm sorry, how a velocity would be zero and then the acceleration would be negative? All right, I'm going to do it with numbers first, okay. for better or for worse. Right, time and velocity, this is meter, uh, sorry, time. Basically seconds, and this is meters per second. At time zero, I'm at rest. One second later, let's take an object if I just drop it. It's going to be going 9.8 meters per second. So 9.8 meters per second. My velocity changed. 
because velocity changed, it's not zero. And if velocity changes, acceleration can't be zero. That, that's the essence of it. it. The only way for acceleration of velocity both to be zero is it's sitting there and it's not moving for a sustained amount of time. If it's, so if you're at a stoplight, yes, you're there for a sustained amount of time, but at some point you put your foot on the gas pedal and you start moving. So there's an instant there where your velocity still officially is zero, but your acceleration is not. And it's just a brief moment, like throwing an object into the air. Oh yeah? Okay. Anyone else? Sorry, I think I heard from Rihanna, you were good, right? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right, the ball problem. This is the ground. Person. Throws a ball into the air. The ball goes up and then down. Like balls do when you throw them in the air. The problem starts just after the ball left leaves the hand. You want to spot your sticks. Problem ends just before ball touches ground. I'm going to make the ground zero. I'm going to make up positive just so that we're all working the same problem. Now there's four key points in the journey of this, and so I'm going to going to identify four moments in time. Time A, time B, time C, and time D. So A, time 